Well, welcome back to another edition of Crane Lake Stories. Uh, it's been really fun to have people chiming in and telling all of the exciting things that have happened, whether they've been uh, generations of families coming to the Crane Lake area or first time visitors um, alike. There, there's something magical about this. Today, we're, we're um, grateful that Tanya Dolan from down in the Northfield area, Southern Minnesota is here to join us. Tanya and her family of five, her husband, and three kids came last summer for the first time to Crane Lake. And Tanya, I guess let's, uh, you know, thanks for coming on, but let's just jump right into it. What was your, what, you know, what were your impressions as a first timer to the Crane Lake area? Sure. Well, the chain of lakes, first off, were just amazing. Um, I think there's, I've never been to a chain of lakes quite like it. Um, you kept w wanting to go further and explore the lakes. And um, it was fun to see what was around the corner when you were going around the islands and, and through the um, channels. Um, and the drive up beaches were great. The Bowdoin beaches were great. The kids had fun, you know, hanging out there and eating lunch and swimming. And so, yeah, that, yeah. that sticks out the most. You guys, you guys pulled your camper up. Um, I think you, you said you stayed at Hamburg's, you rented a boat. So you had accommodations that, that the kids were familiar with, but what was it like to kind of plop down on a spot and just kind of go from there? Sure. The campsites were great. Um, it was right on the lake and we were set up a little bit higher than the lake. So you could kind of see out in the morning when you woke up, um, there was a dock available that we could park the boat on right below our campsite. So we could just, you know, get out and get going on the lake whenever we wanted. And um, Hamburg's was amazing. We really enjoyed that experience. Awesome. So um, you, you've got a high school age son, a middle mm -hmm. school age daughter, and then a mm -hmm pre-school five-year-old yeah <laughs> elementary age you know younger elementary age yep. daughter mm -hmm. um so you've got a very wide-ranging you know group of kids what you know maybe speaking on their behalf what what was your impressions of how the kids responded to you know taking off into the into the you know the the, the wilderness and especially sure. maybe older kids I mean how did they respond to kind of the getaway part of it Right, right. They loved it. Um, you know, we've been to the Boundary Waters and been canoeing with the older kids. And um, this was kind of a similar experience, but we had a boat that we could, you know, a motor boat that we could cruise around the lakes and get to mm -hmm. places faster. So I feel like, you know, it was definitely exciting for them to be cruising around the lakes and, and seeing the sights. Um, and then our youngest, Charlotte, you know, when we would stop at the beaches and, you know, kind of explore there, then she could kind of play and, you know, burn off some energy and, yeah, no, it was great for all ages. Do you have any like stories that stick out or, or anything that, um, you know, if, if you or the rest of the family were to look back on the whole experience of being there, um, something that maybe stuck out as a, as a highlight? Um, well, we pulled up to one beach and it was actually a houseboat beach to take a break and just kind of, you know, um, gets burned off some energy and there was a um, bear warning that there was no camping allowed. So the kids got a kick out of that, you know, and we're all kind of walking around, you know, kind of looking to see if we could see anything. So that was kind of exciting. Um, and then I think when we got out into like the big expanses of the lake, you know, when you could just like cruise, you know, super fast and, and there was, um, that was really fun for Garrett, our oldest, you know, to get out there and really cruise the lakes. Um, and the yep. Vermilion Gorge was great for the kids to hike through and, you know, jump around on the rocks and then you kind of experience that too. So those things cool. were really great. Um, so is it, is it, uh, I mean, I, it sounds like it was a great experience. Is it, is it something that you, uh, you guys are looking forward to going back again to explore farther, uh, you know, up into the lakes or are you planning to go back and what things would you like to do maybe next time on the next trip? Yes, definitely would like to go back. Um, I would really like to camp out in the, you know, at the different campsites around the lake that just looked really fun. Everybody that was out there just looked like they were having a great time. So that's something that I would like to do. And then um, I would like to go to um, Kettle Falls mm -hmm. and to the hotel. Like we wanted to get out there, but there was just so much to explore and see that we just ran out of time. <laughs> it, it, I, can, I can only imagine, I mean, I, I can't remember my first experience because I was, I was so young, but mm -hmm. um, I can only imagine like trying to trip plan 
you know, for a group or a family of first timers. And mm -hmm. obviously there are guides uh, in the area, one of which uh, Michael Schwanke, we're going to, we're going to hear from here in, in just a little bit with um, our kickoff fishing report, but sure. people that, that do, um, you know, help plan these trips are, are readily available. But I mm -hmm. think about it in the back of my mind and I'm like, gosh, if I were to send somebody, you've, you've touched on a few of the things that, that I would definitely say are, you know, the absolutes you need to, you know, you need to see the gorge and you want to check out the beaches and all these things. But um, then you start thinking, gosh, there's, yeah, there's Kettle Falls, the hotel, and there's, mm -hmm. um, you know, going all the way up into Namakin and it, it just kind of continues to go and go. And if you were to ever look at a map of it, I mean, the, the, the possibilities truly are endless. So yes. it's, it's almost <laughs> like your first time, um, your first time trip only left the door open for future, you know, visits to the area. Totally, totally. Yeah, it's it is overwhelming to kind of, you know, look at all that and say, where do you start? So but it was definitely a great experience. You you talk about the beaches, you guys must have been in there mm -hmm. in the summer. I didn't even set the table with that. Yes, yes. We were. Um, any desire to try to see a different season? I know that you um, you grew up in a family of grouse hunters and, mm -hmm, and deer hunters mm -hmm. and spent time up north. Um, did you kind of look around while you were there thinking this might be kind of cool to check out in a different season? Definitely. Yes, that would be definitely something we would like to do. Awesome. For sure. Yeah. Um, so if you were now, now that you're the seasoned veteran um, and you were going <laughs> to give a, a family with, you know, with young kids advice or suggestions mm -hmm. or, you know, pass this on to someone, what would be the, what would be the suggestions you would give them to make the experience um, as great as the one that you guys had? Sure. Um, I would just say if you rented a boat and you're planning on spending some time on the lake, you know, if you're not camping, you know, make sure you um, plan for a full day out on the lake. So, you know, even on some of the beaches, you know, there were fire pits and things like that where you could, you know, maybe have a shore lunch or something like that. Um, really plan to be out there for the full day. And then I kind of liked how we didn't have a plan of what we were going to do while we were there, just so that we could be flexible and say, oh, we want to explore this more, or go to this beach or spend more time here. So um, I think I, I liked that we didn't have a set plan. Sure. So. And th there are, the, you know, tons and tons of activities to do. But I think that's yeah. one of the things that I love about being there so much is, is it is just kind of go with the flow and you, right. you, you know, you pull up to a beach and you know, you explore a little bit from there and I can picture my own kids, um, you know, finding blueberries and picking blueberries and climbing mm -hmm. on rocks and to just be able to kind of put itineraries and agendas aside and, and just kind of take it in, I think is one of the, the things that I and so many other people, it sounds like you guys yeah. uh, alike, you know, just really enjoy about the area. Yes, for sure. Yep. Great. Well, hey, I, I uh, appreciate you coming on as a, a different voice. I mean, we've heard we've heard voices of, of uh, you know, people that have been going their whole life and people that have lived there their whole life. And yeah. um, there's so many different ways that the Crane Lake area can um, can just touch people and, and influence people and um, entertain people. And it's just great to hear a voice of a, of a first timer that uh, had a great experience with, yeah. with her family and hopefully we'll come back again. So thanks yeah. for coming on. Yeah, you're very welcome. I'm glad I could do it. Awesome. All right. And with that, we're going to move to what will hopefully be uh, something that we'll do with each episode and, you know, this time of the season, but um, we're going to turn it over to a short visit with Michael Schwanke, who uh, owns and runs um, Voyager's Guided Service. It is the fishing opener this weekend, and Michael's got some tips for first timers on the fishing front or the seasoned veteran that's coming up to the area to experience uh, Minnesota's traditional fishing opener. Thanks, Matt. Great to join the Crane Lake Stories. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's going to be a great opening weekend. Looks like the weather's going to be nice, mid 60s. Um, yeah, for all the anglers out there, uh, the water temps in the mid 50s. Um, most of the fish should be kind of post spawn by now with the ice going out early. Um, still in the shallows, you know, pitching a jig and a minnow, working some plastics. Um, should be a fun weekend. Hope to see everybody out there.